separation prepare working directories on separate media to which evidentiary files and data can be extracted and recovered after that start the lab evidence log from the case management system to record details of examination and the state of evidence at arrival then locating evidence making a checklist can help in this case in the entire examination process and can use it to double check that everything is there this step depends on the case and the type of operating system used of course there are some areas and files in each operating system that are recommended for evidence gathering but also this depends on the case the evidence can be located from windows operating system linux or unix operating system or sometimes even from both the operating systems in windows operating system the evidences can be collected from files and file systems hidden files detecting unusual or hidden files slack space and windows registry whereas in unix or linux operating system the evidences can be collected by the following steps mount the restored working imaged copy and start analyzing the content use the is command to view the contents of the disk make a list of all files along with access times search for likely evidence using the grip command list unknown file extensions and change file appearance search in areas such as syslog and file access time detect unusual or hidden files compressed files misnamed files encrypted files and password protected files especially the evidences can be collected from both the operating systems i told you like temporary internet files cookies batch files memory and sweep files unallocated clusters and used partitions hidden partitions hpa and dco destroyed or deleted partitions files and data locate and retrieve email evidences scan for backdoors and network sniffers locate root kits or viruses next is the extracting evidence there are two different types of extraction namely the physical extraction and the logical extraction physical extraction during this stage the extraction of the data from the drive occurs at the physical level regardless of the file system present on the drive this may include the keyword searching file carving as we discussed earlier extraction of the partition table and unused space on the physical drive and examining the partition structure etc however the logical extraction means during the stage the extraction of the data from the drive is based on the file system present on the drive and may include data from areas as active files deleted files file slack and on unallocated file space next challenge is the reconstruction of the extracted data once the evidence is gathered and extracted it can be used to reconstruct the crime to produce a clear picture of the crime and identify the missing links in the picture there are three fundamentals used for the reconstruction of the crime scenes they are the temporal analysis relational analysis and functional analysis temporal analysis tries to discover some factors such as what happened and who are involved the relational analysis facilitates the reconstruction by correlating the actions of the suspected victim at the same time functional analysis discovers how the activities or actions actually had happened and it tries to discover the responsible factors there are other analysis uh, techniques uh, applied as well for acquiring the evidences there are many analysis techniques used to present the significance of evidences it's not a must to use all the techniques in all the cases however it depends upon the nature of the case too some of the techniques used here are time frame analysis data hiding analysis application and file analysis log file analysis analysis of email messages and network analysis 
What is time frame analysis? Time frame analysis can be useful in determining when events occurred on a computer system which can be used as a part of associating usage of the computer to an individual at the time of occurrence of the event. There are two methods for carrying out time frame analysis. One is reviewing the time and date stamps contained in the file system metadata to link files of interest to the time frames relevant to the investigation. The second one is reviewing system and application logs that may be present. This may include error logs, installation logs, connection logs, security logs, etc. Next comes the data hiding analysis. Using data hiding analysis, one can recover some important information which may indicate the knowledge or ownership. Here are the methods that can be used. Correlating the file headers to the corresponding file extensions to identify any mismatches and analyze the file signatures to detect the hidden data. Analyzing all password protected encrypted compressed files knowing the password itself may be relevant as the contents of the file. Gaining access to HPA the presence of user created data in an HPA may indicate an attempt to conceal data. Next comes the application and file analysis. Many programs and files identified may contain information relevant to the investigation and provide insight into the capability of the system and the knowledge of the user. The results of this analysis may indicate additional steps that need to be taken in the extraction and the analysis processes. Next comes the log file analysis. Analyzing the network traffic and analyzing each network packet. Analyzing IDS logs and monitor security events, perform protocol analysis and content searching or matching for each packet, investigating and analyzing router logs for syslog logging, buffer logging, console logging, terminal logging, SNMP logging, access control list logging, investigating and analyzing firewall and switch logs. Investigating and analyzing application server logs for errors generated and its time, email server logs, logs executed commands, database logs, authentication logs, operating system log files and finally correlating log files to get the whole picture in case of network based attacks. Next important thing is analysis of email messages. Viewing the email header that contains information regarding the email origin, how it reached and who sent it. Tracing email regarding internet domain using the source IP address in the header. Verifying the validation of email path by checking in the router and firewall logs. Analyzing logs from email server. Contacting the email service provider in case of web based email to reveal the suspect's information. These are generally done for email analysis. The last one is a network analysis. Analyzing any abnormal system processes or port files and services using the commands already available on the system or sometimes using a third party tool. Analyzing startup files to analyze any unauthorized system modification and check for unusual port listening that is happening for establishing connections from other hosts. Inspecting network configurations for unauthorized entries. Identifying initiating IP address, source port, services, date and time and finally identifying an authorized network trust so this is how network analysis can be done so management of evidence is possible through various means and sources and what are the various sources how the management of evidence has to happen has been very clearly explained conclusion this module has presented the importance of report writing along with the 
prerequisites for developing a good report. The management of digital evidences, of course, is the most important stage in cyber crime investigation process. It is discussed based on the storage, preservation, and proceeding them to the court for further process. Thank you, learners. With these words, we close week 13. Thank you for your patient listening.